Hello, my name is TD Lane, and today we are talking about the American Mastodon. The American Mastodon, or Mammoth Americanum, was a proboscidean that lived across North America from the mid Pliocene 3.6 million years ago to the end of the Pleistocene 11,000 years ago. This last of the mastodons would live alongside a variety of other North American fauna, such as American lions, smilodon, peccaries, short faced bears, mammoths, ground sloths, camelops, direwolves, castoroids, bison, cougars, otters, and murder homos. At an average weight of 8 tons and an average height of 2.9 meters, the American Mastodon played an important role as a large herbivore in North American ecosystems. But why did it coexist in these environments with other such large herbivores like ground sloths and mammoths? We will get into that question following some more info about the Mastodon. Taking a general overlook of our subject Mastodon, we can see it's similar to living proboscideans, to begin, the tusks are curved considerably, but not quite as much as mammoths. The dentition is strikingly different, being that they are cusp-shaped instead of dental ridges, we find in extant elephants. The skull is longer and has ears similar in size to Asian elephants, if not smaller. The main body is stout and heavily muscled, again like Asian elephants. To finish, the entire body was likely to have been covered in short hair. Going back to the question regarding why the American Mastodon coexisted in North America with other large herbivores, this is where the true depth of ecology comes into play as these organisms filled different niches. Mastodons ate a somewhat flexible browsing diet of tough woody plants and leaves, while mammoths primarily grazed on plants such as grasses as indicated by hypsodont molars. Ground sloths are a bit more questionable in their diet, although indications of hypsodonty exist in megalonychids, mylodontids, and megapherids. Not only did niches come into play, but also habitat. Mastodons lived primarily in forests, while mammoths lived in more open grasslands and woodlands with ground sloths' habitat dep differing depending on species. This leads into looking at North America itself during the Pleistocene, with much of Canada and some of the states being under glacial ice. There were large lakes in what is now the Great Basin, along with glacial lakes in Canada and several states. Along with this were lower sea levels, which led to more of the continental shelf being exposed, most notably in Florida and the Bering Land Bridge. Not only was there more land exposed, the vegetation was different as well. The area we will pay attention to, though, is the one of the highest density of mastodon fossil sites, the Midwest. The Midwest during this time was heavily forested. The vegetation that we see, though, changes as we get closer to the modern day. Going back 16,000 years, we find a primarily spruce forest, which sifts to a spruce deciduous forest, then a pine deciduous, and finally to an oak-dominated forest. Interestingly, these changes coincide with spikes of charcoal, which are highly likely to be from forest fires. Knowing the environment M. americanum lived in and the food it ate can help us understand why this animal went extinct. An increase in forest fires could cause shifts in the present vegetation, which in turn could cause stress in mastodon population. This population under stress from vegetation changes would be more vulnerable to the climatic shifts at the end of the last glacial period and hunting by the predecessors of the Native Americans. It isn't clear whether it was climate pressures, hunting, or perhaps a combination of the two that caused the end of the American Mastodon. Ultimately, though, it was a member of a long and successful lineage of Proboscidea that was one of the first fossils discovered in North America by Europeans, and it certainly will continue to fascinate us for centuries to come. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.